Hey, what's up, Stock Compounders? Brad here. So I was just on vacation in the San Francisco Bay Area. Got back a few days ago, starting to get caught up on what I missed. And I just saw Stanley Druckenmiller gave an interview. This is from, I believe, a Norwegian bank conference. Uh, so 17, 18 minutes of Stan Druckenmiller talking markets, talking macro, uh, it was a pretty fascinating conversation, so I wanted to share my highlights from this latest interview with Stan Druckenmiller, one of the greatest investors of all time. I just heard in this talk that back when Stan had clients, uh, when he was managing money for other people, he netted 30% a year for 30 years, okay? That is insane. So let's hear from Stan Druckenmiller. I created a Twitter thread with my highlights from this talk. As you can see in the first tweet here, gave a rare interview. I think Stan probably once a year on average gives an interview. So it's not like he does this nearly as much as somebody like Monish Pabrai. Um, and his track record is, is just incredible. So what are my highlights? Stan says, at the top of my mind, he was asked, you know, what's on your mind right now in the markets, in the investing world? At the top of my mind is just how uncertain trying to analyze the environment is going forward. And Stan was talking about studying history, right? Looking for parallels. Uh, with what has happened in the past. He says, for someone like me who likes to look at history and come up with potential scenarios, this is a particularly difficult period, okay? Because it doesn't really have any parallels, uh, at least in the last hundred years or so. Uh, so Stan has so much uncertainty about what's coming, how to play this current environment that we're in. Uh, he says, I think one of the most important things to do is not to play when you don't see a fat pitch, right? This is something Buffett has talked about, you know, the difference between baseball and investing. In baseball, you only get three strikes and then you're out. As an investor, we can watch strike after strike go by and only swing when it's right in that sweet spot. He says, I'm in the hard landing camp probably sometime later this year, okay? So stock market crash is essentially what that's code for. Uh, the economy, he thinks, is in for a world of hurt uh, later in 2023. Historically, this is easy. If I believe in a hard landing, I'm supposed to own bonds, right? Historically, that's been one of the best performing asset classes when the market takes a dive, right? When the stock market crashes. But they're not exactly a screaming bargain with the 10 year at 3.5 in the US. Uh, and he kind of follows up on this in the next tweet, particularly with the Fed that has certainly shown some metal in the last year. But historically, I wouldn't say Jerome Powell was a profile in courage. If we get into a hard landing and he moves aggressively, uh, I could see bonds and inflation coming back with a vigor, all right? So some danger in, in the bond markets, at least with how Druckenmiller thinks things are likely to play out over the next year or two. He says, I think equities are really complicated. Within the equity market, if you put a gun to my head, I'd be short the economy. Okay, and I guess um, Druckenmiller would use the Russell 2000 as the closest proxy to the economy. So he would short the Russell 2000. Um, obviously, I don't wanna go into individual short names, but names like that old economy, economically sensitive stuff. Uh, that's kind of what he'd be looking to short in this, in this moment. Uh, the one area I feel reasonably comfortable 
in is I'm short the United States dollar, okay? So this is really the only risk on position that Druckenmiller is taking right now, is this bet against the US dollar. He says, I missed the last nine months run up in the dollar, probably the biggest miss of my career in currency trades, okay? So Druckenmiller is really saying, this is something I should have seen, okay? It was an, an error of omission. I just couldn't bring myself to own Joe Biden and Jerome Powell, okay? That's really what prevented him from taking part in this run-up in the US dollar over the last nine months. Uh, just that lack of confidence in, in Biden and Powell. He says, our fixed income position is minimal except in JGBs, which are Japanese government bonds, where I don't know whether I'm gonna get paid or not, but I think the risk reward is ridiculous. It reminds me a little of the two year, two years ago. Okay, so uh, in Druckenmiller's mind, this is kind of one of these no brainer bets uh, and we'll see how it plays out. And of course, recently the big news has been that Berkshire is really doubling down on the trading companies that they own in Japan. Uh, I've always thought the way to build a long-term track record is when you really see the ball swing really big, okay? So again, don't swing unless that pitch is right in the sweet spot. And when you don't see the ball, don't swing, right? Don't reach for pitches. Be patient. Uh, know that the pitch is coming. You just have to wait for it. And then when it's there, you can move in, right? Because you've, you've got all that dry powder. Uh, Druckenmiller says, if you're up zero to five percent in the bad years, in the terrible years, and you throw a couple 50, 60 percents in there, the numbers look pretty good over time. And that's really how Stanley built his track record. His average, you know, net after fees of 30 percent per year for 30 years. Uh, that wasn't making 20 to 30 to 40% per year consistently over that 30 years. It was having a lot of fives and sevens. Okay, he talks about this a little bit later. He says the top year was 99% and I had a lot of fives and sevens in there. Uh, but he didn't lose money. Okay, that was the key. He, there's no down years. Uh, and he talks about that in the next tweet. If you make a bunch of 30s and then you lose 55 to 60% in a year, you've got a long, long way back. Uh, and this is really how he starts this question off. He's asked, so why are you so, so fanatical about not losing money? And he says, it's really just math. If you lose uh, 50%, You've got to make 100% to get back to even, all right? So the asymmetry, if, if you lose, really hurts, okay? Because you've got to make so much more just to get back. Uh, and that's, that's really what Stan is pointing to here. And that he hasn't been consistent, but um, he's avoided losses, okay? And he talks about in the next tweet, it was a matter of never losing and then throwing some big numbers in there, maybe 10 times. Okay, so maybe 10 years out of those 30, he was up big. And the other 20, you know, single digits. Okay, that's, that's kind of the way to think about this. It's not about swinging for the fences each and every year. It's about avoiding losses in the years where there's, there's nothing super compelling, but when there is something super compelling to really go all in on those things and, and um, do that consistently. So that's, that stands kind of formula for, for how he's been successful. Um, not consistent performance, patience, 
swinging big when the opportunities are there and not shooting himself in the foot in the other years, right? Reaching for, for things that are outside of that sweet spot. This was fascinating. So he's asked, um, is it more investing with his head or with his gut? You know, intuition versus analysis. So he said, Stan said, with analysis comes paralysis. Uh, Soros, who he worked under, used to say invest and then investigate, which I was already doing before Druckenmiller met Soros, uh, which isn't how isn't usually what you hear about from the, the value investing community, right? It's stay within your circle of competence, um, you know, really understand what you own, that kind of thing. So this, this is a, a little different, what, what we're hearing from Druckenmiller. He says, it's more important now, even than it was then. If I get an idea and I think it's attractive, I generally go ahead and buy it and then tell the analysts to look into it, right? To do the research, to do the deep work on it. If it turns out I was wrong, after that analysis is done, he gets out, right? It was a mistake to buy, followed my gut, but it turned out to be a mistake. Get out, right? Sell it. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the stock market was not higher in 10 years. Okay, that's something I think Stan said maybe a year or two ago. Uh, got a lot of publicity by the, by the news media. He says, I think the way to make money in the equity space in the next two years is to be patient, right? Just back to this thing he started out with. There's a lot of uncertainty in terms of how things are going to play out from here. There's really not much historical precedent. And so for Stan, it's wait, right? Be patient uh, until something becomes much more obvious uh, than it is now. We have possibly some rough roads ahead, and I think the central bank will respond in some crazy way, right? And this is part of the opportunity that Stan is waiting for, uh, for the central bank to respond in some crazy way uh, where it becomes much more obvious what path to take as an investor. This is a movie where I've never seen anything like it. Again, no historical precedent, really. I'm going to be very careful not to dig myself into a hole when I don't have a strong belief. Right? Same thing, not reaching for the, for the outside ball, right? I think the opportunities are going to be amazing as this movie unfolds in the next year, both in macro, uh, probably talking about currencies uh, largely in that case, and in equities. Okay, so um, sit tight. There could be a, a big correction, recession, whatever coming. Uh, obviously, nobody can predict that. Um, but Stan, you know, that's his intuition that, that there's some pain ahead, uh, which will create opportunities, right? For people who are prepared for that scenario. So uh, at the end, I just linked to the full interview here, which is right here. It's already been watched 41,000 times in the last four days. Uh, clearly, people know Stan Druckenmiller. They know what he's done, um, they know he's the real deal. So definitely a great interview to watch, uh, but I think I really touched on some of the biggest talking points here in this Twitter thread and, of course, this YouTube video. So again, if you like this thread, if you like this video, please like it, share it. Uh, that really helps me and the channel. So Anyway, guys, uh, hope you enjoyed this summary of Stan Druckenmiller's latest interview. Uh, shout out to Stan for putting his thoughts out there. He doesn't have to do that, obviously. Um, but it's always fascinating to hear from such a master. Um, that's all I got, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.